Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. I'm glad that you joined us today. Um, I hope you're ready to learn a little bit more about Logic Pro X's mixer window. So what is the mixer window? Well, first of all, you know, you normally have the tracks window up here and then if you double click on something, you can see its information down here. This is the editor window. Um, you can change MIDI information while you're down there or mess with the actual audio clips if that's what you're working with. And then you've got this thing over here, which is your track inspector. And a lot of people use this for applying their plugins and everything. And you can see the track itself and one place that is also information where that track is going. But uh, if you wanna see like your entire project and where all the signal is flowing, then you can come up here and click on this, which is the mixer. It's also the X key on your typing keyboard. And it shows you everything about all of your tracks right down the list. So um, kind of neat, you know, you can get in here and um, do things like right click and assign a channel strip a particular color. Um, that might help you with organizing things as you go along. So this is like my sub in the track and these three I might assign uh, a different color because they're uh, the string parts and then some a few various other things with drums and stuff like that so um, that way you can have a more organized look about your uh, channel strip down here which is important um, you can also uh, instead of seeing the entire project you can begin to eliminate certain things like if I hit this single button now I've just taken away everything on the mixer that doesn't apply to just this sound so I have now limited the mixer to be my original sound plus the place that this is being uh, processed on a side uh, kind of distortion level thing um, and it's going to the stereo output so that's all I can see when I go back to tracks I see everything and then all actually reorganizes some things to put my audio out front and then my MIDI tracks and then my buses, things like that. So when I'm on tracks, it's organized the same way my tracks are up above. And then these things over here, you can actually eliminate and make your own custom screen. So if I don't want to see the audio tracks, I can uncheck audio or take away my instrument tracks. Or maybe I don't want to see my aux tracks right now. I just want to focus on leveling the actual tracks in the project and not worry about the buses. Um, you can take away your outputs and your master if you don't want to accidentally be uh, mastering your project too early. Then um, that is available to you over there. And you can also expand the size so you can actually look at them a little bigger. Now, if you don't want to see this on the same screen as your tracks and everything, you can actually hit Command-2 and open this up as its own separate screen, which is kind of neat um, because if you have two monitors, you can actually move this onto a different monitor and constantly be monitoring uh, your levels, make sure you're not clipping, and see where everything is moving. Now, I would like to point out on this screen is that right now everything is being sent to the stereo output. Um, you can switch that up. So if you just click and drag, you can select multiple uh, things. That is click and drag on a place that's just uh, gray and not an actual track. So say you wanted to like lower the volume of all these uh, violin parts together, you could click and drag and lower all the violin parts, or you could actually bust them together. Again, these are being all selected, and I'm changing it from a stereo output to be going to bus number one. So now all these string parts are going to bus number one, which is pretty cool. So all the strings are now controllable by this one volume knob. So let's see, let's solo those three. Now the reason you are still hearing some of the strings is because they're all going to reverbs which is on bus two before they actually went to here let me show you what else you can do i'm going to close this window just a second i still have these three tracks highlighted 
So I'm going to shift select them up here. I'm going to right click and create a track stack. And we're going to make this a summing track. So now what just happened is these three tracks have fallen into this one bus track. And it just is a much better way to display it. So you actually open and close the bus here or down here uh, with that little triangle. Um, and now if this were me, I would turn off these bus twos and put the reverb track now on the group sound. This also means that your fader can take away all of the sound because it's being processed by the fader before it hits over to bus two. So that's kind of a neat thing. Now, if you wanted to reorganize things um, and they weren't in the correct order down here, say you wanted these audio tracks to be uh, on the far left side all the time, you could select those audio tracks up here and actually move them to the top of the uh, track list here. And now it is reordering your mixer by the way that you actually have everything done up here. So it's kind of cool. So if you're needing to work with your mixer screen, these are just a few of the things that can help you become more comfortable and have a better workflow as you're working in the mixer screen. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.